size does not matter. Especially in the realm of books. I do have a special affinity for short books. I find myself picking up a short book, especially if it's an author that maybe I'm not super familiar with or I'm just in a mood and I don't feel like engaging with a novel for over 30 hours of my life. So today I've compiled a list of some great books that you can actually read in a day that are for everyone. And the reason that I say they're for everyone is I see a lot of these videos and I find them incredibly commendable. I think the creators are fantastic that make these videos, but a lot of them are maybe a little bit more than a day for the average reader or slightly above average reader. We all read at different paces, right? I would consider myself maybe slightly above average just because I consume so many books, but I think the average reader sometimes a day might really mean five days, six days, seven days. But these are books that I think you can actually read in a day and get the foundation of what the text is really supposed to represent, get the realized version of the book. So let's get into it. I would say my favorite version of classics, or at least the publishing house that I found has really successfully honored these short little stories is Penguin Little Black Editions. I've read about three of them and I've had amazing experiences with them and I've quite literally read them in approximately what would be a day. The most recent one that I'd read was Mikolai Gogol's The Nose. It's a very absurd story about a man who loses his nose. I did a play production of this story basically, very loosely based on it, took place in the 80s and I said, you've got the right girl because I look like the 80s threw up on me every single day of my life, so. But this was great, totally consumable, didn't feel like it was overwhelming. Whoever translated it did a fantastic job and I love that. I've also read Lev Tolstoy's How Much Land Does a Man Need in conjunction with another story in that as well and I'm forgetting the name. Both stories were fantastic though and really just small, concise, told you exactly what you wanted to get out of it. Very lesson learning, right? about greed, you don't need much, and beautiful, loved it, fantastic. I've also read Life of a Stupid Man by Ryunsuke Okutagawa. I found this on the side of the road, and it was love at first sight, especially the title. It's all these ruminations on what you can kind of do better in life, these roamings of the mind, and kind of unsettled versions of yourself. It's very kind of dark, a little bit broody, but very good. Very, very good. Very, very good. To kind of go into the realm classic, I guess we should talk about a book, or at least an author, who I really love. My favorite book is over 500 pages, but this author also is incredibly successful in writing very short prose. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Steinbeck has a lot of small novels. I haven't read Cannery Row yet, but I understand that is a fantastic short novel as well. I've read The Wayward Bus, which is pretty short, but something that I would say maybe takes a couple of days to read. The Moon is Down is also incredibly short, but maybe a little bit more of daunting material dealing with war and things like this. Of Mice and Men, I'm rereading it. I mean, I read it for like 15 minutes this morning. The brevity of it is what I think makes it so powerful. You can have these fully crafted characters in such a short amount of time and a truly devastating story happen in such a short time frame that the reader just kind of feels like they've been fully fed. This is what, oh my god, a hundred and 18 pages is the version that I have. I remember reading this in middle school, I think, and it felt so long and arduous, but this is really just a perfect length to show you the quality of great storytelling. I love it. I mean, come on now. Another fantastic classic, another fantastic classic, Animal Farm by George Orwell. I quite literally read this in a day during COVID. I didn't get out of my bathrobe, I sat, I festered, I thought about life, I thought about pigs, I thought about barnyard antics, and I thought about how the world works, which is basically what this book is about. I feel like everybody kind of puts this on short book lists and it totally deserves to be there. This is one of my favorite books. I will probably reread this again. I brought this home from my parents' house because I wanted to reread it 
it's fantastic. It's a classic like no other, and it continues to remain relevant in today's society. Nella Larson, Passing. This is a book that took me a couple of days to read, but I definitely think the story is worthy of being read in a day. It's very, very quick paced, and it kind of follows the guidelines of exactly what you want out of a story. It was like a perfect diagnosis of how a story should be written. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and then there's this <gasps> And, and all of the characters are showing you things about yourself, whether or not their story is incredibly parallel to yours. It's showing you things about yourself and things about society and things about people. And at the root of this, this is a great people story and uh, really great. Love it. To kind of not be about people, <laughs> flush. This is, <laughs> this is a biog biography about a spaniel dog and life through his lens, through his eyes, and how he is living this kind of respectable life, and then craziness happens, and he's, his trajectory is kind of set off kilter. It's all of the little journeys of this dog. I think it's a funny way to read Virginia Woolf without it feeling too existential and too difficult to maybe comprehend in a day. This is kind of a light fluffy book that makes the reader want to read more. It almost seems like a little ludicrous that it's a dog written through, that it's a dog, that it's a story written through the perspective of a dog, but it's, it's good. It's great. It's fun. It's light. And I feel like sometimes you need a light book that you can read in a day because sometimes these ones get a little depressing and you get, you know, weighted down. It's like you got a perpetual weighted blanket on you and it hurts. Not in a good way. You know, going through this list, I kind of keep thinking like, what makes a successful story? What captures an audience? What is, is the driving force of these characters that can be so fully equipped to tackle the story in such a short amount of time? And I was doing a little bit of research of that on my own and I was taking a course. So I recently started a Patreon and I have been wanting to kind of implement writing a little bit more of my feelings, my thoughts, and it's really hard, or it's not hard, but it's not the easiest thing to do to kind of make that very brief and still impactful in such a short manner. I have been kind of looking for resources to make that dream become a reality and I have found success in Skillshare. If you don't know what Skillshare is, it is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry professionals, platforms across film, productivity, illustration, crafts, hobbies, tons of different things that you can sink your teeth into. Skillshare is a world-class community that connects teachers and members and members to inspiration and feedback from like-minded creatives. It has a learn-by-doing approach to teaching where each member can create and share a project after completing a class. It's been really interesting and fun has been using their learning paths. Learning paths are curated sequential class collections to master a specific skill or competency so that you know exactly where to start your learning journey. You can save time searching. Skillshare has curated high quality content in the category of your choice so you have a clear direction to achieve your goal. The one that I've been using is writing short fiction. I want to be able to write something that does its job in a short way but made it successful and maybe not even short fiction that I'm writing but being able to use the instruments that I found in this course and write something that makes sense and captures the audience without feeling like, oh my God, this is, this was a meeting that could have been sent in an email sort of thing. So thank you so much to Skillshare as always for helping me make great videos, for teaching me so many things about myself that I didn't even know were possible. And now hopefully you can do that as well if you would like going into the new year, have a new learning path on your side. The great people over at Skillshare have offered me a wonderful code. The first 500 people to sign up with the link in my bio using my code can get the first month of Skillshare for free. Maybe they can even teach you how to do an Australian accent, a successful one, because mine is sort of a little bit off. Um, I don't know if they have proper classes for that, but maybe, you never know. You can find it out. 
Oh boy. So now we're going to get into the realm of more contemporary fiction. Fiction that I've discovered in my reading that I was able to read in a day or close to a day or again a book that feels like you could fully comprehend it in a day. Obviously there's millions of books that are short. Well not millions but you know what I mean. There's tons of books that are short that you could definitely read in a day but these are ones that I have in my collection or that I've come across that I really like. First one, Lanny, about a boy reaching maturity and a town kind of ostracizing him but finding company in the strangest of places. I don't know why I keep on doing this like a newscaster or like a MSNBC late night host. What are the books that are fit for one day enjoyment. Back in Five is a great book. I've talked about this a million times before and I loved it. In that same sort of vein of maturity and finding out the truths of life, we have The Seas by Samantha Hunt. Definitely read that. Maybe in a day, maybe not. I don't know. Pretty close to that though. Fantastic. Loved, loved, loved. Felt like a little girl. Kicking my feet, giggling. Kind of. But same sort of idea. I also have, and it's not my favorite book, by any means, but it's a book that I think introduced you to the mindset of a very famous author and somebody whose writing I think is fantastic. And that's McGlue by Otessa Moshfag. This is definitely like a novella. It's all about this sailor who wakes up in mysterious conditions and he's trying to kind of retrace and understand how he ended up there. I didn't have an amazing time reading this, but I think it showed me the framework for a mind that's doing fantastic things on the page. Definitely read this in a day, 100%. I also wanna talk about short stories. I think a lot of short story collections are readable in a day, especially if the short stories don't take a lot of page real estate. <laughs> I was trying to think of the word. I especially like if they're a little bit weird. I like if they're funky and I'm like, what are you going on about? Well, absolutely, what are you talking about? And when I think about what are you talking about, what's going on, I think about No One Belongs Here More Than You by Miranda July. She's wild. She's a wild kooky girl. Kooky girl. These short stories are very offbeat, very funky, makes you feel like you're in a little bit of like a weird dream gift shop and you're shopping for a candle that looks like, um, I don't know, some sort of gecko. You know what I mean though? They're leaning into the weirdness, which I appreciate. And I feel like you're constantly kind of trying to see if the next story is going to top the last story in this sort of inflamed weirdness world that July crafts. I think it's fun doable in a day. Tons of short story collections are obviously doable in a day, but that was just the one that was jumping out to me. Uh, and then we're gonna get into nonfiction. I read a lot of nonfiction and I like to take my time with nonfiction. So it's kind of rare that I'll read a nonfiction book in a day, but there are some books that I think you can read in a day and you can be successful with them. First of which is, oh God, one of the best books I've ever read in my entire life. And I feel like I don't talk about it enough on this channel, even though I probably do, but that is Cockroaches by Scholastic Mukasonga. This is an author whose family was trapped in the Rwandan genocide. And she's taking the stories of her family and talking about the horrors of the Rwandan genocide and how everybody's lives were affected, how every single person was touched by it. And oh my God, this is a profound novel and something I think every single person can read and get something out of. It's graphic, it's tough, it's difficult, but it's, it should almost be like required reading in schools. It's uh, uh, amazing, amazing. And you can absolutely read this in a day. Maybe it might be a lot of emotions coming on to you reading this in a day, so it might be a very difficult day, but definitely doable in a day, and you can, oh, you can feel it. You can feel it. Fantastic, fantastic novel. A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. Definitely readable in a day. Sassy, sassy Hemingway. All about his life living in France, the people that he encounters. Kind of these short stories as well, short memoir stories. I would also say, and this is kind of like a little bit of a sadder one, so I'm sorry, 
But this was a book that I picked up at a time where I wanted and needed it the most by a great author that I love. And it's all about depression, dealing with depression. That is Darkness Visible by William Styron. Wow, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Again, dark, difficult subject matter, but the novel is very short. I think it's what? 84 pages, 84 pages. But again, it's that argument of the power of brevity and how much do you need to write in order to convey a powerful message. And it's great, <laughs> it's great, it's great, it's great, it's great, it's great, it's great. I also have a special category and this isn't gonna be suggestions. This is gonna be more of like a reminder that these are things that can be read and I think should have an appreciation to be read. And I'm a little bit partial because I'm a performer, but plays, plays. And I know a lot of people don't really know where to start, but I think that if you just pick up any play, you'll find something in it. And yes, plays are meant to be performed. Yes, 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 I totally understand that. I hear you loud and clear, say it louder for the people in the back, but I find myself reading plays and enjoying them a lot like a novel. I feel like Maybe you can even extrapolate on the imagery a little bit more because so much is not described to you You have to formulate it all in your head kind of on the go. So I just have a stack I don't have like a huge play collection actually the oldest boy, which is uh, my friend's book Which I should give back to her it's by Sarah rule I did read this in this moving exploration of parenthood an American mother and a Tibetan father have a three-year-old son believed to be the reincarnation of a Buddhist Lama when the Tibetan Lama and a monk come to their home unexpectedly asking to take their child away for a life of spiritual training in India, the parents must make a life-altering choice that will test their strength, their marriage, and their hearts. Interesting. I did read this, but I forgot what it was about. <laughs> Bus Stop by William Inge. This is the sort of classic Marilyn story about, oh, just, you know, Kansas City in America and, uh, you know, how people were living and shooting for their dreams. This also reminds me a lot of Wayward Bus by John Steinbeck. Red Light Winter. Oh my God, this is one of my favorite, favorite plays. It's a three person show and a girl running away from her life in America and she meets these, she, she runs off to Amsterdam and works in the red light district and she meets these two men and kind of, as time goes on, their stories reconnect. They lose touch, but then they reconnect, and it's beautiful. I love it. I Down Mount Morgan by Arthur Miller. I have this because I actually performed in this. I played a 17-year-old. Not now. I love Arthur Miller, though. I also can suggest uh, Small Craft Warnings by Tennessee Williams as well. It's just kind of older writers that I think captured uh, these stages of grief and these stages of trying to break away from the structure of that time frame in American history. And it's beautiful, beautiful. And then, oh God, we have August Osage County. Oh man, I love this story. I love this story. I don't know what it is, but a lot of my plays are with kind of America, uh, very American. I have a strong desire to play very American characters. And this is a very American story. The movie's fantastic as well. All about family, all about family, family secrets. So good, so good, so good. That's just some plays. There's more that I can suggest as well, but these are just some, just some that I have physically. And I just wanted to talk about how I think plays can be read in a day and be enjoyed. And you can just have a lot of thoughts about plays. You can just think about stuff. <laughs> um, the last book that I wanna talk about, and really probably the only book that I've read in recent years from this category is thrillers. I think thrillers 100% are a category of book that you can read in a day because your body just wants to know <laughs> the end. They just wanna know. It's like, please, Tell me, tell me what's going on. The book that I would suggest for this is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Oof, what a book. This is a great book. Again, all about family and secrets and a small town and whodunit kind of thing. These little girls go missing and it's so well written. It is a longer book, but something that you can read in a day, I think, because you're gonna wanna know the ending. Absolutely, absolutely. Highly suggest. 
I talked a lot. I'm so sorry. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my short books. Let me know what books you suggest as a short book. There's a ton of short books out there and I would love to hear your suggestions. These are just mine. These are the ones that came off the top of my head, but I would love to hear other suggestions. You guys are wonderful. You're fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. I have a Patreon now. If anybody was wondering, I'm gonna be posting exclusive content. Check it out if you want to. I highly suggest we're having fun over there already. We're having fun. You guys are wonderful, you're fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one.